I did a video recently on how not to look like you just slept in your vehicle. <laughs> and in that one, I talked about dressing for van life. So in this video, I thought that I would tackle how to care for your hair while you're sleeping in your van. washing my hair and then I realized that I've never really filmed this so when I don't have a shower I have this it's just a gadget that sprays water out so I just wet my hair then and then I use bar soap but it can be used for body or for hair it doesn't lather but I'm used to it now and then just rinse it And then I'll just wrap it. That is how I wash my hair. So I realize, yeah, I, I rarely take any videos of me washing my hair. And part of it is because I don't wash my hair very often. <laughs> and when I do, I'm usually at a place, a public place where there's other people around. And so I'm not going to film that. So I thought I would show you what I do when I am out in an area where there aren't any showers or at like a state park or a national park where there may be toilets, but there aren't necessarily places to shower off. This little water bottle is really a Lunatec pressurized dispenser or shower. So you can wash off your feet, you can wash off your body if you want to. It only uses 700 milliliters or 24 ounces. And for me, I even have yeah, a couple ounces left after washing my hair uh, and actually using more water than I normally would because I realized halfway through that I should be filming it. <laughs> so I uh, usually probably use about 500 milliliters, I wanna say which is about 18 ounces maybe. And so <laughs> that is what I do. So if I'm at a beach or somewhere where I'm just outside, I'll let it dry naturally. But a lot of times what I'll do is I will blow dry it if I can somewhere and then it will stay pretty straight. And I also have a straightener that I'll show you in between washes. So then that just helps, it just helps with the, having it be a little bit more manageable because it can get quite wild when it is just left to air dry. It'll like psh, grow. It takes quite a while to do my hair. That's why I don't shampoo very often. Or my other trick for the road is just going into Walmart and having somebody else do it for me. So I'll get a blowout uh, wash, sometimes a treatment, and then have them blow dry it straight so it'll stay for a while. And in between, I'll just do it. Um, and I am hooked up to power, so I wanted to show you. This is the little hair straightener. So when my hair is dry, I can use this to just straighten it if it gets a little bit humid and I still want it to look a little bit straighter and if it's starting to puff out a lot, I'll just use this and it's a really good, like look at how little it is and it heats up really fast. I can use it with my Jackery or when I'm powered in somewhere, it's a rechargeable so it's wireless. If you wanted to just charge it up and then take it with you, this is what it looks like a little brush and I love this because it's very easy to use. And like I said, it doesn't take very much to charge it up. I just use it for touch-ups, not to straighten my whole head of hair. So it lasts me a long time uh, before I have to recharge it. Don't know exactly what that is, but I'll keep track maybe and tell you in some future date. And then this one is my little hair dryer. And I looked high and low for a hair dryer that was powerful and little and portable. This is not a rechargeable one. This has to be plugged in. So I use it when I can plug into shore power, whether that's at a family or friend's house or at a campground. And my plugs are under here. So I have a plug 
that goes back here and it's wired out to where the shore power is attached. And then this is a round brush with, I think, boar bristles. I love it because it's big and so it, it takes very little effort to straighten my hair when I'm blow drying it. And so I section my hair off using my little handy dandy clip. And I actually want to get out my mirror here so I can see what I'm doing. that is how I dry my hair in my van when I do have shore power. So that is that. And then as you can see, it's very, uh, what do you call it? Fluffy. And so, yeah, usually I get the best compliments about my hair about day three when it's calmed down a little bit and some of the oils have been replenished in it. But this is how I do it. I don't have a part. I just kind of flip it and flop it however it wants to do it. It has mind of its own. That's why I just, I prefer to wash and dry my hair on days when I know I don't have anything else and then I can just tend to it and then it's done for quite a while before I have to do it. And like I said, if I'm lazy <laughs> and don't want to do it myself and I'm somewhere where there is a salon or even a Walmart, sometimes when I'm knowing that I need to make a stop, I can call ahead and make an appointment and then get my hair done while I'm there as well. So it's a one stop shop and get your hair done. And some of you have noticed that my hair is getting lighter. While I was at home, I had a wonderful stylist and she has always worked well with my hair. The, um, she trims it and she colors it. And I have wanted to transition to gray and because my hair is probably about 60% gray and so our idea for doing that is what is called strip dyeing. So she's just taking a few areas that need it, but otherwise letting my hair grow in underneath and around the way that it naturally wants to. And so we shall see. The process will take quite a few years, but as I get used to the lighter color because my hair has always been a darker color and then that really shows the growth of grays out and I've always used organic products and organic colors actually on my hair that's why I went to this stylist because it was an organic salon I saw her about maybe seven weeks ago now so the next time I'll go in is about a month and a half from now or whatever if I am in that area and we shall see and you shall also see as this hair of mine does its thing so yeah I'm trying to think of what else I can tell you or show you about my hair one thing that is easy to do and that I have found does really help is adding collagen to my coffee. <laughs> so I use two different kinds or actually whatever I can find when I'm out and about. Like if I happen to be in a Whole Foods and I find a good one, I'll use that for a while. So I just change it up. But I have found two that I like a lot and dissolve well in the coffee and are tasteless. So for me, it's just 
kind of a no-brainer. It's something that I have started to incorporate. And I do notice that it affects my nails and my hair and my skin. So for whatever that's worth, I do think that is one thing. That's one tip that I can share with you. My second tip is don't overwash it. My mom used to tell me that less is more and I have found that with so many things in my life. And actually products and overwashing is one of those things. And we're often sold that as a way to improve our hair, our skin, our bodies, whatever. And it's hard to pick through and know what <laughs> to believe these days and what really is good for you. I do try to use organic products, which I hope is better for the environment as well as my hair. But the whole overwashing thing, it started by accident and default because as I came into this lifestyle, it was harder to find a place to wash my hair. And my hair takes a long time to wash and dry and style and all that. And I just didn't want to bother with it. So I just didn't wash it as often. And it's funny because as I did that, I noticed that by the third and fourth and fifth days, people would be complimenting my hair more than ever. I just thought that that was crazy because I'm like, I, don't, I haven't washed my hair for five days. I just kept quiet about it, but I noticed that consistently. And even you guys, you'll say, your hair looks great today. And I wanna say, oh my gosh, I started filming and thinking it's been like two weeks since I washed my hair. <laughs> Honestly, I can go pretty long. I say that because I feel like you need to know, full disclosure, is like the less I wash my hair, the more people tend to say it looks good. And I know that some people have oily hair and can't do that, but I've actually heard that even with oily hair, if you stop washing it as much, you produce less oil and so on. So it kind of evens out like that. I don't know if that's true. I know it's true for me. I tend to have normal to dry hair, but when I wash it less, it tends to just produce the right amount of oil to help it to stay uh, soft and shiny. Because it is on the drier side, I will just use a drop or two of castor oil and rub it on my scalp between washes and that also I feel helps my hair get smooth and less frizzy maybe and I'll add some drops of essential oil like lavender or rosemary to that to make it smell good as well. So that is what I do between washes and then on the day that I know that I'm going to wash my hair I put a little more castor oil on uh, my, not only my scalp, but then I will rub it into my ends a little bit more just so that when I wash it, the it's already protected. And I use this soap, which I'll talk about in a little bit um, more about that. This is J.R. Liggett's, I guess, is the soap brand. But you can, there's a lot of different bar brands. They look like this. And this is just a mini one version of the other. These are biodegradable, so it's okay to have it on the ground. It's just, let's see, olive oil, coconut oil, castor oil, essential oils, rose, lavender, and spearmint. GMO free, and that's that. But I do think the motto, less is more, does apply in this case. It works for me for whatever that's worth for you. Tip number three is to protect it. I am not a huge hat person. I never was. I just always hated how my hair got smushed down when I wore a hat. But I do think that that is one line of defense that is really good when you are out in the sun, especially I will wear a hat when I am going to be in an area where it's very sunny for a long time. So that is one way to protect it. The other way to protect it is not to use styling products that much. I do it so infrequently, like once a week, maybe once every couple weeks or 10 days. So I know that 
when I do it, it's not going to be so damaging. So it's not an everyday type of thing. And I know that there are products to protect your hair. So go ahead and use those if you want. I just tend not to use a lot of product in my hair because I feel the more product I have, the more gross it gets. I mean, and even it used to retain a lot of the smell from campfires and things like that. I mean, this is before I did van life, I would hate being around fires because it seemed like my hair just attracted all the smoke. And I think that it was because I used to use more product in my hair. And now I, I don't notice it. I'll brush it and I don't f sense the smell from fires and things like that. So I don't know if that's true, but I feel like that is one thing that I'm noticing. Another thing is that just day to day, I used to brush my hair, but now I just use a wide tooth comb and this is a little thing. And it just feels like it goes through my hair easily and it gets through all the tangles without ripping and tearing it. The only time that this gathers a lot of hair is when I'm actually using it with my wet hair. And I know even you're not even supposed to brush or comb your hair when it's wet. So I just go through it very lightly and get all of the tangles out with this when it is wet. And that's when I get like the most hair coming out of my comb. I don't put my hair up a lot, at least like in ponytails where it's pulling at my hair because I get headaches and I don't know women with long hair, how they do it. I'd be curious if you have long hair, if you get headaches when you put your hair in a ponytail. And I also know that putting it up tightly can be damaging to your hair, but I use these clips and a lot of times I'll put one up here and one down here loosely and you'll see that a lot. And the reason I do that is because it just is not so much pressure on my hair and I don't get headaches that way. So I will use these when I want to or need to put my hair up. So that is what I do with this hair of mine. And I want to leave you with this thought because it's really not about my hair or my tips or anything like that. I think more importantly, I would want to say you are perfect the way that you are. I love when I see people who fully embrace everything about themselves. They're the most beautiful people in the world to me. And I am new at the whole thing of learning to love myself and accept myself and embrace everything about myself. So I think that would be what I would want to leave you with the most is that thought. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.